Hi there guys, HLG has sent me through their newest light fixture, HLG 350R. This is the one with the Diablo boards, the highest efficiency Samsung and Osram LEDs. They also sent me through their test results for this fixture and I've tested this light. Unfortunately, there is a difference between the two results. There is a slightly lower efficiency on my system test than the HLG test. We're going to look at why that is. First of all, let's have a look at the light. It's um, pretty standard format now for HLG at this case, at this stage. They have an Inventronics driver on the back here with a dimming module. They also have um, obviously power cabling and then their aluminium um, backing board on the bottom. We've got two of their uh, quantum boards, the Diablo ones, with the 5K Samsung uh, whites and 660 nanometer reds. You can see here in the spectrum test that the uh, it's got a nice wide spectrum, lots of blue in it for short and dense growth, and also a um, uh, good amount of red for high horticultural uh, efficiency, photosynthetic efficiency. The um, fixture is designed for a five foot by three foot space, which is a, the test area that I have it mounted in there. That's uh, 1.5 by 0.9 meters. I set up for test and optimized it to where I thought was correct, which was to bring down the fixture within the test area until the center point measurement is in around a thousand micromoles. I did that and found the optimum setting to be exactly the same as HLG have recommended. That's 40 centimeters or 15 inches hanging height. And I took measurements with the spot on quantum sensor um, across in a grid. So six measurements along the three foot angle and then 10 measurements across the five foot angle. That's one every six inches or 15 centimeters. 60, record, uh, 60 measurements in total. And I tested and recorded that there is a uh, average power intensity across this five by three area of about 620 micromoles per meter square per second. Multiplying that by the area gives me the total amount of power reaching that um, target area. And then dividing it by its consumed wattage gives me the power map and the system efficiency. You can see here the system efficiency is 1.51, sorry, 2.51 micromoles per watt or usable PPF per watt, which is very, very good for, um, for any grow light, about the second highest I've uh, recorded. So why is this lower um, than the HLG test? The HLG test you see now was done in an integrated sphere and they got 3.06 micromoles per watt. Let me put you down here and I'm going to sit down and go through some slides and explain why this difference occurs. I've got a graphic here to explain why the results are different. Starting point is what are the measurements. The first one is the PPF per joule or PPF per watt. And that is the total um, amount of photons in the power range. So from 400 to 700 nanometers emitted by the fixture. Second one is PPFD. And this is uh, the photosynthetic photon flux density. So it's measuring it per meter squared. And that's measuring the total amount of light reaching a um, square plane or a flat plane uh, of one meter squared. So this is the amount of light reaching just that area and um, over one second of time. Look a bit, a bit deeper for the um, HLG um, setup. This is done in an integrated sphere. An integrated sphere is a, a sphere which is coated internally with a highly reflective surface and has a um, quantum sensor internally. And that sensor is calibrated to read uh, the total amount of light being generated inside that sphere. And in the HLG's case, they put the 350R into the sphere, turned it on full power, and they recorded the total amount of light being emitted from the fixture as about 1,050 micromoles, 
which equates to, as I said, 3.06 uh, micromoles per joule and say per watt as well. And that's how record, they record that. With my one, as I said, I, I um, was recording the amount of light, uh, the amount of power emanating from the fixture, but hitting a target area. And there are losses involved in this test because some of the light overspills, so it doesn't reach the target area. And some of it, when being reflected off walls, will be loss in what's called reflectance losses. Reflectance losses are when the um, power or the photons hit these reflective walls, but don't bounce back and actually generate heat instead. In this instance, you can see that the light is um, coming from the fixture onto these silver mylar walls, which are highly reflective, but not totally reflective. So you could have up to 10% of the photons being absorbed by the mylar instead of being reflected. To demonstrate this, um, I got the thermal camera out. And you can see here, I'll just show the area of the reflective walls adjacent to the light. And you can see where the light intensity is highest. So there's a lot of photons hitting the, um, the reflective wall. We're getting quite a lot of heat generated. In fact, that, that part of the reflective wall is four or five degrees in centigrade higher than the uh, other areas, showing that there's quite a lot of light being converted into heat by reflectance losses. Also, there's what's called reflectance or, or uh, light overspill or loss, not from going into heat, but actually just escaping the area. Um, and what you can see is I've tested, basically I inverted the, sis, the sensor, the quantum sensor adjacent to the light at the same level of the light. And you can see that there's about 50 micromoles of power escaping, uh, exiting the test area. And considering this test area is 1.5 meters by 0.9 meters, so about 1.4 meters squared, that's 50 micromoles by 1.4 meters squared is about 70 micromoles uh, of recorded exiting or heading in the other direction and not hitting the um, plant canopy. And that out of our 1,050 is in around 5% light loss. So the 18% loss that we're recording from the, um, the difference between the integrated sphere measurement and the test that I do is from losses in terms of um, heat, so reflectance losses where the reflective surface is imperfect, and then light overspilling or escaping the test area. This is perfectly normal for every grow light. Um, HID, for example, uh, high efficiency double-ended um, HPS bulb will emit a PPF of about 2.1 um, micromoles per watt or per joule. Um, but in a test, we'll only deliver about 1.4. There's about 30% losses there um, with uh, HPS. With LED bar lights, you can get them a little bit closer than these fixtures um, because the light is spread a little bit wider. And in those cases, the reflectance losses may be a little bit lower, maybe 15%, but there's always going to be some. And in a LED fixture, it's going to be in the range of about 15 to 20%. So the HLG fixture is normal. That's what we would expect to happen. And it's in, in the range of normal performance. I've like said all that, the 2.51 uh, usable PPF per watt or micromoles per watt that this system, uh, the HLG generates in this system, um, is excellent. It's second only to one other result, I think, which was the Chilled Ultra, which is far more expensive per watt than this one. So uh, for this pro money, it's the highest efficiency grow light on the market and uh, very good value too. It's a, a pretty basic fixture, not a huge amount of bells and whistles with it, but they put all their money really into uh, high performance um, and components. A nice fixture overall. Thanks a million to HLG for sending them through. And um, as usual, I'm sure I'm going to get some uh, questions about the uh, the methods and the, the theory and all that stuff. I'm looking forward to, to hearing your criticism and comments. Please leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Take care.